Listeners be advised. The Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not in place. Be sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holy Loki Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson, and for you freaking motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, okay, we're we're getting a little bit racy, uh, and by racy, I mean we're talking about race issues and dating, so <laughs> if only I was getting a little bit scandalous, because look, you have to follow me on the vibrator in the pod in my pod to just, you know, know about the scandalous side of Vernon. <clears throat> As I said, Sebastian Adams is here. Anyways, other than Sebastian, I have Tara here <laughs> with us today. <laughs> don't judge me, Tara. Please don't. <laughs> I want to meet Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian's a hoe. That's all I can say. <laughs> Love them That's though. <laughs> oh God, how are you doing? I'm great. Such a pleasure to be here with you, Vernon. It's a pleasure to have you with me. Oh God, I'm in such a good mood. Thank you, Tara. Thank you for being you. So, if you haven't heard about Tara on the last episode, you need to go back and listen to the episode. It's unrelated to what we're talking about today, but still. Go back and listen to the other episode because Tara's amazing. Um, And she's also a sex coach as well as a sex therapist. She's an amazing person. So who are you, Tara? Do you mind going a little bit in more detail for the people who haven't met you yet, who have not listened to the other episode because they're not doing what they need to do? Shame on them. (laughs) Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. (laughs) Love you, though. (laughs) Oh, so I, am, I am a sex therapist and I'm a sexuality coach. And I, I, asked, I actually also am an author of a book. I forgot <sighs> to say that last time. So I wrote a book. I, I'll show you the cover. It's a, called Rediscovering My Body. Ooh. And it's available on Amazon. And what I love about it, it's got all these beautiful uh, quotes and pictures. And it's a, it's a guidebook. It's like you get to journal and play in it because I wanted to create something of beauty for women in particular, who are wanting to rediscover themselves. And so creating a compendium of their experiences, of their sensations, so they can better know what's true for them. Because oftentimes I find that we're all always invalidating ourselves or not taking seriously what's going on in our body. So this Rediscovering My Body is the book I wrote based on the work that I had created with women who had had cancer. So it, now this book is for all women, but it began with the work that I was doing with women who had cancer who were wanting to reconnect to their sexual selves. So that's a little bit more about me. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Look, so mm-hmm. that's definitely going to be in the show notes of both episodes for one. So make sure you grab a copy. And I love that um, the theme of it is focus on the body because <laughs> I, I don't know if I told you this, but the category of the year, the theme of the year is body. And even for my um, my journal, uh, the, my sexual exploration journal, that's focusing on body too and body image. So look, everybody, grab that. Grab her book. Uh, women, get it. You'll enjoy it. Like, Get yourself together, however that looks, however it makes you feel good, 
however you make yourself feel good about yourself is needed. It is needed because there's not enough positivity or um, body positivity that's going on these days. Like I, I see the other people affirming others, but also being self-deprecating. So I think we do need to focus on having that confidence in self too, uh, because we always think about the boosting or gassing up or the uh, affirming of others before we even think about ourselves. So true thing. Yeah. Yeah. Get the book people. (laughs) Thank you. Yes. Get the book. (laughs) Oh, today, as I mentioned, we uh, are talking about race issues and dating. So for yourself, uh, what what uh, most definitely in the work that you do, um, have you come across any issues uh, with people who are dating uh, when it uh, revolves around race or race issues? Or have you even experienced some things in your personal life uh, as it relates to dating uh, relationships and uh, the interplay of, of, of races? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, yes, yes, and yes. And so I'll just say that I identify as Latina and that my um, family of origin is from Colombia. So also this uh, immigrant experience of coming to the United States. I'm second generation, um, although I was adopted, but still second generation Colombian and um, and Latina. And so I feel like late race comes up all the time, mostly um, not consciously and, and not in the the realm of of speaking about race because what i find is that i as i identify as latina and my clients are mostly identifying as white um that it's in the mix like it's in the field race is in the field and for some of my clients the reason why they have chosen me is because they too identify as latino latina latinx and so they're wanting to speak with me because of that shared experience. And I think that's important to acknowledge and just say um, that I think that it's a a powerful, uh, goodness, reflection that I offer to my clients of color um, to know that their experience is is valid. And also, um, yeah, I guess that's what I want to say about that. I I mean, I, I know that more will unfold but I just really wanted to name that that's what that's where it shows up mainly when people are coming to see me. And I think uh, you made a great point about how, um, you know, people feeling validated when they do come see you because we don't really because we speak about race, but we do it on a surface level and we don't really go into the nuances of what uh, people's decisions are when it comes to like either who they date or who like choosing a professional to work with a lot of that does come with uh, personal uh, baggage or comfort because like even for myself I've had a therapist who um, was white nothing against her she was a great person Um, she was a little bit younger but I could not necessarily open up as much as I wanted to Uh, and that was a dis I was doing a disservice to to myself by not speaking up that because I didn't want to make her uncomfortable by me saying I need a different therapist and you know on the flip side of that I learned you're supposed to do that part (laughs) if you if you feel like you can go to a better option that helps you you know, open up, go to that option. That's self-care, that's help, helping yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, oftentimes we don't have those spaces that we're able to freely say that, yeah, people come to me because of my race. People do come to me because they feel comfortable to talk to me. And it is because of who I am. It is because of my skin color. Is that necessarily fair? It's fair for them. And that's all that matters. Right. And rather than I'm not uh, if someone else who looks differently chooses me, am I going to still serve them? Of course, because we're in the field of helping people. We're in the spaces of making sure people grow within themselves, heal from whatever they're dealing with. But you <clears throat> healing has no color in a sense. Um, we it has no race it has no history well it does have some kind of history you know what i mean but but um it's not that 
uh, we're going to close the door on somebody just because they look differently, but the color of my skin makes a difference because I'm there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and when I hear you say that, I hear you say that there's an opportunity for deeper intimacy because the person has chosen you in this professional relationship based on their preferences. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true also for dating. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, I agree. Um, we don't look at that though. Like, <laughs> in, like I saw a post today on Facebook actually, where it was discussing how certain people have preferences and how uh, if it's said by a man, it's automatically seen as being misogynist. But if it's something said by a woman, it's okay, even though it's something within the same lens. Like, oh, uh, I don't want a plus size man. is like, okay, she has that choice. She has that preference. And for a man who says, I don't want any plus size women, you're being misogynistic. And for me personally, I think it's all based on intent. Um, <laughs> but I also think that that is one of those areas where we have to step outside of our own traumas, our own personal experiences to look at things based off of how it's presented in, in its uh, actual context um, before we put a, a label on it. And um, like, even when it comes to races or how we interact. And I, I had to do some self-work on this uh, myself. Like if I were to see a, a master slave video and it's uh, also engaging in the non, uh, well, the consensual non-consent play of some type of, Uh, interracial slave master uh, scenario where I will automatically just be like, oh, this Black man or this Black woman in this video hates themselves. And this is why they're in this position and doing these things. But it's possible that they love themselves very much. And they also love the partner that they're with, that they both wanted this fantasy to be played out and they're doing it because that's what they want to do and not because it's being self-deprecating, uh, deprecating, which depending on your kink is also pleasurable for that person. So <laughs> it's like, but yeah, I, I, that's one of those things that I've been working on with myself to exit that thought process. Mm. But, and I'm curious, Vernon, when you say um, that it's based on intense, mm -hmm. That was a few thoughts ago, but do you remember when you said that based on, uh -huh. I was curious, can you say more about that? So, um, like, whenever someone says certain things uh, about their preferences, um, sometimes we just have to look at it at face value uh, without any kind of emotions to it. Um, like, oh, I'm not attracted to big, big people. Okay. For me, Um, because I've done my own things because I find myself extremely beautiful. I'm not offended by that statement. Uh, I see that as their, their uh, way of communicating to me that they're not into me and I accept that. Um, the intentions behind that is not to make me feel um, bad about myself or make me feel less than. It's just them communicating that this is just not something that they prefer or what they're attracted to. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. to make me feel um, bad about myself or make me feel less than it's just them communicating that this is just not something that they prefer or what they're attracted to and I just have to accept it um, versus 
I don't like your fat ass. I, I don't like um, you're ugly or something like that. Um, phrases like that brings uh, intentions of demeaning uh, the person that they're communicating with uh, and attempting to make them feel less than. And when those situations come up, I just see that individual as po possibly being insecure and they're just trying to bring me down um, to whatever, you know, to knock me down a peg because I do feel great about myself or, you know, other people in similar situations feel great about themselves. Uh, I remember uh, way, 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 way back in the podcast, uh, a friend of mine and I, we were talking about how um, there's uh, apparently a lot of men who will go into women's DMs there, uh, and say horrible things about them because they're pretty uh, and then still want to attempt to date them or whenever they get a rejection that's when it's the uglier side of them that comes out so that's that's just where my mind went when it came to the uh, conversation of intent mm -hmm. yeah uh -huh, yeah oh and I appreciate you clarifying and so for me when I hear somebody say a generic I don't like large people or I'm not attracted to large people uh, or I'm not attracted to old people, which I might say, mm, I can personalize that. So I'll just take that they're not attracted to me. I, I guess for myself, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't take that. If they were telling me specifically, Tara, I'm not attracted to you, then I would be like, oh, message received. But the general information of I'm not attracted to older women, I'm not attracted to Latinas, or I wouldn't necessarily extrapolate that to mean me is my sense in, in that context and maybe there needs to be a little bit more context um yeah so I'm curious about that because that that makes me um yeah it makes me curious what I hear and then the other piece of that is when somebody's um just being mean it's like oh not only would I not take that personally, but I just wouldn't take that. It's like, you're just mean. Right. And I just like, no, just no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I do not understand that mindset at all. Um, most definitely the ones who think that they can be mean to you and think that you're going to either be kind to them or um, be willing to be in the space with them or even date um because even something similar to that happened to me recently <laughs> which i um uh, was like sir um no this is not going to happen because it wasn't a fat joke or anything like that but um they asked for a nude i said no i'm not going to send you a nude and then they were just like well uh, i guess it was a way to try to body shame me or coerce me into trying to send something it was like well I guess your ass not fat anyways now it's like it's not and just kept it moving because it's not going to change me at all I'm not going to be because I'm in a different space mentally than uh, some other people might be that might have triggered someone else to actually send something to prove them wrong or what have you because I guess that has worked for them in the past and because it's worked in the past they built that pattern of doing these same things I don't know I don't know the person I'm not in their mind but just my um, <laughs> perspective of what may be going on with them so it's like those kind of things though it does make me uncomfortable I've I'm just like, I don't need it. <laughs> I, I, I can yeah. just move myself away from that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and what I hear and what you've shared is like this, uh, this buoyancy because you have such incredible self-love. And so then you don't need to be coerced by somebody to do something that you absolutely don't want to do because you love yourself so much. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yay, 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 yay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love yourselves, people. Love yourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, which makes me also think about this slave play. Like if if people are engaged in the slave, and I, I mean, I've really been thinking a lot about slave and slavery and how that comes up in, um, goodness, the dark side of our erotic life and like playing into this dark love or shadow side of the collective unconscious is really what I, I feel like. It's like, it, there's 
seems to be some powerful resolution that can happen when it is absolutely consensual, right? And people are consciously choosing then to engage in this. It's, it seems like uh, there's profound healing that can happen in that. Uh, what's your thoughts on that, Vernon? Because that's what keeps on coming to me. Oh, I agree. Um, I So I recently uh, attended a SAR. Uh, I was I think at the beginning of last month, no, it was the middle of um, January. And with it, there was a event where uh, we were discussing, um, not ethical non-monogamy, uh, it's- um, but say, say what a star is, because I think some people might not know, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sexual attitudes, <laughs> uh, sexual attitude reassessment uh, and restructuring uh, training. Um, so- with it, we were um, uh, discussing uh, ethical, no, is it ethical? No, uh, consensual non-consent play. And with uh, having those discussions and uh, seeing some of the videos of how that uh, may go, uh, it just had a lot of people's minds working of uh, how the shadow side of the taboo goes. And it's just like, you really can find a lot of healing over there or you get to express yourself in a completely new way that is more taboo than most people even understand it can be and i love it for those people because of that because they get to create an environment with somebody who is able to provide consent and do certain things that other people would not agree with but because it's within that safe space of their own environment their own home whatever there are even if it's a, a club that just specializes in this they get to do those things and, and indulge themselves on that type of play um, and everybody leaves happy and feels satisfied with themselves because there was no true boundaries that was broken there was always yeah. respect throughout of throughout it and there was just genuine consent in fun or pleasure or sex however it looks so uh, yeah I'm all for it <laughs> so like those people who are into the safe slave play uh like after that I'm just like do you is it for me not really but I'm not going to yuck uh yuck your yum because that's what you like and I enjoy it for you as long as you are being pleased and being satisfied by this person be the best slave that you can be Amen. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I know some people who haven't, you know, experienced something like that. Um, it is very uncomfortable to think about, most definitely with all of the racial tensions that we deal with, especially in this country. So it's yeah. like, how do you escape that? How do you actually feel safe with somebody uh, where it's so much historical uh, proof of should I trust this person but sometimes we have to step outside of the historical side to recognize okay history has proven this but people also change and that's something else that history has proven so mm -hmm. just understand and acknowledge who you're dealing with when it comes to those kind of things is this somebody who actually approaches me and cares for me and loves me for me or is this somebody who gaslights me or makes me feel less than or deprives me of my own spiritual and uh, sexual nutrients so mm -hmm. yeah I like that a lot and what I would say is that when we really truly trust ourselves and that we know that we would never jeopardize our safety because we hold ourselves in such self-love and esteem that we can then begin to trust ourselves with others. Mm, yes, yes. So <clears throat> if, let's say uh, I was your client and I came to you um, because I was having issues with having sex with the partner of a different race. We've um, been communicating, knowing each other for about three years. How long is me and this, uh, his, um, this phantasma, phantasm of a partner has been 
going out. I want to say we've been dating for five years, and mm, and we haven't had sex in five years. I'm a whore, so um, we've been dating for a year, <laughs> and I'm not able to get myself up to the point of uh, engaging in sex with them. Um, what what would you tell me? Well, I mean, it would really depend upon your goals, because for some people, that's not really that important that they engage with their partner in that way because they're feeling emotionally connected or spiritually connected or psychologically bonded with their partner. Mm. Um, but if they're wanting some sexual engagement, it would really depend upon what is going on, really what's going on in their body for them. I think there's a lot of wisdom that is inherent in the body and that they could begin to explore the sensations in their body. So for example, if that person was experiencing revulsion in their body when they're trying to engage with their partner, boy, that would be a sure signal. Um, if they're feeling numbness, that might be another signal. Um, if they're feeling a, maybe a stuckness, these are all things that we get to explore. Now, there's really no one way cookie cutter approach forward, but it really is the opportunity for my client to begin to explore what's true for them because I, I don't I don't fix anything that's broken because <laughs> most I don't believe people are broken. I feel like the opportunity through therapy is to make different choices. It's like we get to explore because we're ex expanding our awareness that there are different choices to make. And so that's that's what I see is the opportunity in this process of them understanding what's true for them and their body so they can begin mm -hmm. to make different choices about how to have pleasure with their partner, or even if they want to have pleasure with their partner, maybe they really don't. And that's what their body's telling them. Mm, good point. And I love that you mentioned that, um, essentially that when it comes to advice and things like this, it's not cookie cutter. It, you really do have to do uh, have these conversations and really know the person, know their um, goals, know what their intentions are, uh, understand what's going on outside of just a surface level question because there's a lot to it and uh i think by highlighting that i hope someone out here <laughs> in the ether uh will get that message that yes it's great to you know um look at some i guess advice columns or even just horoscopes because horoscopes are great i love them but not to have those same things be the thing like the rule to their life or that this is the thing that is solely the, their identity or solely how they are to be operated or expected to operate within their life or um, that this advice that this one person received for themselves about their individual circumstances that you may be going into something similar that that same advice is not going to fit you like whenever people go to their friends and ask them about hey what would you do in this situation that even with that response that they provide to you is just an option it's just a, a choice that you can make but you still have to do what is best for you at the end of the day and best for the relationship that you're in so yeah yeah and and i really do truly believe that the wisdom is inherent in the body because the body is lie as like this the mind makes up all sorts of stories about how things should be and even in this example of receiving advice is that there's a desire to codify it before mm -hmm. it's even validated and so the opportunity is to tap into is that advice true for you because it resonates with your body with your experience mm. yes Ooh, and this is why I'm a firm believer whenever it comes to self-care or even when you're working on yourself and you're in therapy, get a massage to like find some time to work through your body, let out some of that pent up energy because it's there. It is there. Like you said, your body knows your body <laughs> answers things like facial expressions. Your face does whatever it wants to do before your mind actually has a decision of what <laughs> what to expect here. It's like, mm, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Are you ready for a little bit of sex questions? Uh, actually, no. We're going to do Never Have I Ever this time. We're going to actually do ooh, Never Have I Ever. Ooh, <laughs> all right. Okay. Because I am very curious to see how this plays out for you. So, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> never have I ever gone more than a month without masturbating. I've never. <laughs> Same, because honestly, once I learned, <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> there's no going back. There's no going back. Once you once you've learned, once you break that taboo, mm -mm, it's, uh, no, I cannot go back to that. <laughs> Even during the time I was celibate, I said, I cannot. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ready for another one? Yeah, these are easier than I thought. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, never have I ever slept in a... In, oh, yeah. Never have I ever slept in a nude all night. I, I always do. <laughs> Same. See, it's not that bad. Um, no, not bad at all. Have you always been that way? That you just slept in a nude? Or did that, is that something that progressed over time? I, I think it progressed over time. I think... Uh, with my my first husband, I was probably coming into the relationship. I was quite young, uh, mm. sleeping in a nightgown, and then he always slept naked. And so then I just kind of just it was easier, less laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that you think because oh my god, laundry! I need to <laughs> wash clothes tomorrow. But <laughs> conserve water, sleep naked. <laughs> right, right. If you care about the environment, sleep naked. And I think, like, for myself, I used to, I, I think I was 18 or 19 when I first started to uh, sleep in the nude. I, it was after, I think I was 19, because uh, I had a roommate uh, freshman year of college, so I didn't want to, like, be around the apartment naked. So I was like, mm, let's be respectful here. But um, I think that sophomore year, I... No, it wasn't sophomore year either. I actually didn't start sleeping nude until uh, junior year of college. And I think it was because I just stopped caring. Um, that was when I was go going back into the phase of loving myself again. And then I just, yeah, <laughs> it I have not gone back to wearing clothes in bed. No, it's take them all off I, I, it's, it's comfortable I like the feel of the sheets oh my god I remember my freshman year um I shaved my legs for the first time it was for a play and oh my god that feeling I was just like I need to do this a little bit more often <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> smooth yeah so smooth if you have not shaved your legs and you have hairy legs do it one time enjoy you can get the hair back mm -hmm. it's going to grow <laughs> but just just give it one experience <laughs> feels nice yeah <laughs> so would you like a would you rather sure i don't know what that is <laughs> so essentially as would you rather do one thing or the other thing and you just select uh, whichever one so Let's go for it would you rather have a threesome or participate in an orgy? Oh, well, I, I like the personalized attention that happens in a threesome, mm. but I'm, I'm not opposed to an orgy. I feel like there's, there's fun in that, too. <laughs> <laughs> See, Tara, you're okay. just like me. You are just like me because questions like this, I'm just like both. I, I would rather do both yes. of them. <laughs> <laughs> depends on depends on my mood, how I feel that night exactly. or that day. <laughs> you're threatening you're threatening me with a good time, and I love this threat. Come on, follow through, follow through. Oh my god! Yeah. Like, but you did make a good point about um, the personal attention that you get in a threesome. Because oh my god, yes, yes, most definitely. If you're joining uh, another couple, so you're their third uh, and. My mindset when it comes to a threesome, I'm here to be pleased. I'm not here to please y'all <laughs> because you can please each other every single day. I'm a guest in your home, so take care of your guests. What what are we doing here? <laughs> I love it. That's a good that's a good way to be received. <laughs> right. 
just so they know this is what I'm expecting that's going to happen here. That's the only time I have expectations. I will be honest. <laughs> if, if anything else, yeah, regular. Let your hair be- down, Vernon. <laughs> if you're not pleasing me, I'm not showing up. How dare you invite me here? <laughs> I'm not. You should have said this was a voyeur session. Then I would have said. <laughs> maybe oh god (laughs) well tara do you have any last words that you'd like to share with the audience before i close this out yeah have more fun (laughs) yes yes join the threesome Mm -hmm. or an orgy yes (laughs) (laughs) we're having orgies on the podcast Thank you so much, Tara. You are so amazing. I hope the it's been audience- fun, Vernon. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to the audience out there, thank y'all so much for listening to the Holy Liloquy podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality. And just in case no one else told you this today, you are beautiful. You are worthy of happiness and joy. You are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.